very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? In our Gospel reading today, we see two disciples traveling on the road to Emmaus. And as we see in chapter 24, verse 11, these disciples had said that the words about Jesus' resurrection seemed to them an idle tale. So nonetheless, they were walking on the road to Emmaus, carrying heavy burdens, feeling sad, downtrodden, despondent. And Jesus, just like last week, as we were studying the story about doubting Thomas, knowing their lack of faith, comes near to them. He comes to them and asks two questions. First, he asks them, what is this conversation you are holding with each other as you walk? And then again, after Cleopas asks him if he was the only visitor to Jerusalem not to know these things. He says, what things? And the wonderful outward focus of our Lord. Isn't it amazing that he always comes first to listen, even in his own incarnation. The divine Son of God comes to listen and to learn for 30 years before he steps into his ministry. But he resists comment until he hears and knows the pain that they're carrying. This in turn elicits a very clear lament from these disciples. A situation of grief and of grieving. Only this ministry of presence, of active listening, can draw this out. For our first meditation today, as Christ comes near to you with a non-anxious presence as your friend, without judgment, with gentleness and care, what are you feeling that needs to be let out? What grief are you carrying? What pain needs to be voiced? In this time of this virus and this pandemic, let's take some time with Christ present with us to lift the lament to God.
we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They are at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was, he, he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he in interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The followers of Jesus had a very real and broken hope about their view of Jesus. He was supposed to redeem Israel. He was supposed to be the reigning king. Disappointment often comes from misguided hopes and expectations and worldly values. He even calls them foolish to think in this way. Jesus corrects them regarding his purpose regarding Jesus' purpose to suffer and to die. Jesus shows them that the way of the cross was not found in power or prestige or the way of conquest. The cross was found in kingdom values. And these kingdom values were very much a failure to onlookers. The kingdom of God moves through the meek, the humble, the poor, the broken, the sick, and through sinners. The kingdom of God is marked by weakness. Weakness is the way. The kingdom of God is marked by surrender. Surrender is the way. The kingdom of God is about entrusting our lives to God to be the great mover. And all those outside, the outsiders to Christianity and to Christ, see suffering as something horrible. It's shameful to live simply. It's shameful to be a servant. It's shameful to be homeless. It's shameful to share your burdens. And Jesus did all of these things. To onlookers, the cross was a failure and a stumbling block. In Hebrews chapter 12, it says that Jesus despised this shame, the shame of the onlookers, of the naysayers, and he endured the cross and despised the shame. To God and to us, the cross was the greatest victory ever, suffering then is promoted, it is valued, it is embraced. Take some time now to gather your sufferings and your lament and to see this area of suffering from God's perspective. How does seeing the value of Christ's suffering shine a new light on your own suffering? What worldly values have you held on to that Jesus wants to loosen the grip on for his sake? Jim Elliot has a quote that said, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. As you meditate on those sufferings, those areas of pain through the lens of the cross, Invite Jesus into your pain, grief, suffering, and misdirected hope. As you think of these things, notice Jesus right next to you. Allow him to bless that suffering as he shows you a new perspective on it.
So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. When they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. In this section of scripture, we see the disciples, the followers of Jesus, go from being burdened and downtrodden to being people of hope, to people of proclaimers of the very presence of God. And at the root of this change is the manifest presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the followers demand his presence. They say, come with us. They say, please be with us before they even knew it was the Lord. And in traditional fashion, our Lord reveals his presence in the breaking of the bread. And in the Greek language here, it's the very similar language as, in, as the institution of the Passover. But sometimes we don't notice the presence of our Lord among us and in other people. But the move of these followers of Jesus to invite them to rest at table, to be hospitable, is what it took for our Lord to further reveal himself. And this gets to the very purpose of our lives, namely to get to know our Lord. But what is the mark of a good friend? What is the mark of the most intimate friend is it's the ability to share anything and everything with them, to be able to be transparent, to be known and to know. Jesus entrusts himself to those following him and he entrusts himself to us. He desires to be known and to know you. For our final meditation today, if you've never experienced the presence of Christ, let's take a moment to invite him into our hearts. You can say, Lord, I don't know how to do this but I invite you to lift my affections and my heart for you. Help me to feel like a child of God. In conclusion, our hope in this life and in the next is to be with our Lord, our risen Lord. 
These followers of Jesus went from thinking the risen Christ was an idle tale to becoming proclaimers of the resurrection. In other words, God calls us to himself. And then at the very same moment, we are commissioned to proclaim his great name. We'll finish with a verse from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. May the Lord bless you and keep you today. You broke my chains of sin and shame And you covered me with grace And you mend my life with your holy fire You covered me with grace And you are the hand that reaches out to save And I am saved